And welcome back, welcome back to Gruntilda's Tower. We're gonna go through doing all of this, but um, yeah, this is I'm the Comic Foil. This is the finale to Banjo Kazooie. Uh, we're gonna open that note door in a second, but guys, I got a story to tell, and you're gonna sit down and listen to it. Um, if you didn't already hear it from Twitter, uh, so I recorded this. I beat the final boss already. And while the credits are playing and I'm finishing up the episode, the entire Let's Play, the power goes out for my entire apartment complex, right? So, obviously I lose all of the footage, I'm gonna have to start over. But the game, the N64 game, even though the N64 shut off, auto-saved my completion of the game and would not let me refight the final boss. That's just the way this game is, I suppose. Um, enjoy this idle animation of Banjo-Kazooie while I'm telling this. So, that entire, like, 12 hours that I had on my old save file, like, completed and now useless for this Let's Play. I can't use it to finish the Let's Play. So what did I do? I started the heck over. Um, and I managed to beat the entire game, or, you know, up to this point, all the way through Furnace Fun, collected everything in my personal best record time ever of six hours, ten minutes. It was, I was very frustrated, but it was also kind of fun to see how quickly I could beat the game. So, I went from 12 hours to six hours. Um, know that those, um, 12 hours are a little bit inflated because there were times where I was just kind of like sitting here while videos processed and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I might have even left this game running like a little bit longer than I was supposed to. Also, this shouldn't really be 18 minutes. Um, that's longer than it should really be. So, I even thought about re-recording um, the episode where I did, uh, re-recording last episode where I did Furnace Fun. Um, but I wanted to just struggle with that without you, because here's the thing. So I know one of you guys in the comments, my time for Bubble Bloop, Bloop Swamp is a lot better. Um, I know one of you in the comments really wanted me to do it without using the Joker cards. Um, I'm sorry I didn't think about that at the time. I kind of wish I did that for you now, uh, because I did use the Joker cards back then. This time, replaying it, I could have used that as an opportunity to do that. Here's the thing, though. Since it was a new playthrough, all of Brentilda's facts about Grunty, all of the hashtag Grunty facts, changed. So, everything I learned from the Let's Play was no longer valid. I felt like it would just be weird to show that, and I wasn't gonna bother finding all the Brentildas again on this other playthrough. So, look at that time for Rusty Bucket Bay, though. 34 minutes, not bad. This is not, like, speedrun caliber at all, but that's like a third of my time on Click Clock Wood. You know, it was a lot faster now that I had it fresh in my mind where everything was. Um, it was the worst and best thing ever. But, let's finally go through and defeat Gruntilda in this Let's Play. So that door to get up to Gruntilda is 810 notes, meaning you'll have to have visited every every level at least once. You'll have to have gotten at least 10 notes from every level. You can't completely skip any levels to be fighting the final boss. And we are going to unlock her portrait now. So, 94 jiggies. 94 out of the total 100 jiggies to get to actually fight the final boss. You know, there's not a lot of wiggle room. This game does want you to do everything. As opposed to Banjo-Tooie, which I think requires 70 jiggies to go fight the final boss. Um, if you come in here, this is just kind of a, a neat little area here where you can, um, where I can fail to kill this minion. Um, you can see here the room where Gruntilda, th this is from the Game Over sequence that I never actually showed you guys, but this is the machine that Gruntilda was going to use to transfer Tootie's power to her. And there's these cool doors with the knockers, um, that you see Gruntilda come down from at the beginning. I'm thinking that's, like, Gruntilda's bedroom up there, and over here maybe is, like, more of Klungo's workshop. You can't actually find Klungo in-game. Also, these really look like Goombas on the wall. But okay, 
we're gonna go over here to this very nice room, and what's that? There's more note doors, the biggest one of which is 882. So very close to the maximum required. Uh, there's four note doors in here. This one just has a giant red feather, which fully restores your red feathers. I had been thinking incorrectly that these doubled your stash of everything, but no, that's what you have to do with the Cheeto kitties. And I only found two instances of Cheeto. I forget where the third one is, but he has codes you can use to double your eggs, red feathers, and gold feathers. Um, I never really found that necessary. That's a little bit too much cheating for me. Oh, whoops, I'm accidentally talking to Ding Pot from the other side. That's a little bit less interesting. So, are they all Ding Pots, or is just this one Ding Pot? Anyway, this is the very Ding Pot that um, Gruntilda was using at the beginning of the game when she was doing her mirror mirror on the wall thing. Yeah, and Dingpot is not very loyal to Grunty. I guess this one's different because most of them have happy faces, and this one has, like, the big tooth. So that's really disgusting, if you think about it, that... I guess she uses this cauldron for everything. Like, not only was she using it to, like, scry on Tootie, and Dingpot says she got sick in it before, but also she uses it for her laundry. That's too many things for one cauldron. And I doubt she's cleaning it properly in between. Also, it's a cannon. Um, jumping in this Dingpot is how we're going to get up to the arena for the final boss. Now, this final boss I also have fresh in my mind, so when before I was kind of doing it from memory, now I'm doing it from, like, very recent memory, so... It's a pretty tough fight, honestly. But I think I've gotten pretty good at it, so I... Well, <laughs> we'll see. I guess I should hype it up and be like, oh man, this is gonna be hard, let's see if we can do it, but... Um, I'm gonna be honest, guys, I got this. I... I'm no speedrunner but I feel like a Banjo-Kazooie expert after everything I've been through now. So, Grunty's on her broom. She's gonna sweep at us. The broom, like, grows these big old teeth and this big old crimson chin. And then kind of putters out like an old jalopy. And that's when you can hit her with the rat attack rat And I think, yeah, it's just two passes. Um, I think this next time she's going to do three passes instead. Whoop. Wait a second, did I not? Oh man, I'm so dumb. Um, I didn't open the last note door. Lol, whoops. Um, I guess we're going really pro here. Um, now what happens if I die? Because I want to at least show you guys. I would not have died on this anyway. I'm just, I'm too excited. There's too much going on. Yes, yeah, so we're going to quote-unquote rematch. But that's because I was so busy talking about this and talking to Dingpot, I forgot about the last note door. Some of you guys are probably facepalming. Yeah, 882 notes, so very close to everything in the game. You open this up. And it's going to lead you to one more portrait, which takes four puzzle pieces. So to get this, you need to have 98 out of... Uh, sorry. Um, 98 out of the total 100 jiggies. But you get this picture of an empty honeycomb piece. And that is going to... turn all your honeycombs red. What does that mean? That means that they each count for two hits. I essentially doubled my HP. Glad I noticed that before I got too far in the fight, too. So we'll go in and fight Grunty again. She's gonna talk about how, like, oh, back again for more, since I defeated you once. No, you didn't, Grunty. I decided I elected to go back. Um, 
Another thing I never noticed until people pointed it out to me, so you have eight honeycombs, that's the maximum you can get in this game. Um, you start with like, what, five? And then you can collect three more. There are enough honeycombs in theory to give you four more, so you should have a maximum of nine at the end, but the maximum allowable is eight. So actually, the last six honey empty honeycomb pieces you collect in my case, the honeycomb pieces from the last three worlds don't actually do anything. But, like, what are you gonna do? Not collect them? But yeah, they don't actually increase your health at all. That's so dumb. That's... Like, I think this game is great. I don't think that ultimately really hurts it. But there's a lot of technical things about this game that are just weird. Like, another one is the whole thing with the musical notes. How, like, if you leave a level, it doesn't... Uh, you have to recollect the notes, and apparently that was a memory thing, because they couldn't figure out how to get the musical notes to save how many notes you had per level. Okay, you're gonna do a fourth pass. I took more damage on this phase this time, because I was also talking more. Okay, the green ones... You gotta use the Wonder Wing, because the green ones home in on your position. They're pretty much unavoidable. And then she's gonna shoot these red bolts. Now, notice she shoots them at me, but if I'm moving, she's going to basically lead me. She's going to predict... So if I kept moving in that direction, it would have hit me. She's predicting where I'm going to be when I fire them. So you had to kind of juke around a lot. So yeah, we're on phase two of five right now. Um, I like this fight a lot. I was reading online that some people think this is a bad boss fight. Um, I think it's pretty great. It kind of tests you on a lot of the different moves in this game. Um, I don't really love this phase of it. So I'm waiting for... I think you have to hit her, like, three times per side that she hides on. You know you did it when she moves and she also makes that big shriek. She gets... I can't do it right now. I haven't been able to hit my, like, higher register lately. I think because I haven't been singing, my voice hasn't been... You know, I haven't been exercising my voice muscles for that higher register yet. Whoops. That was a close one. I think I pressed C up before I pressed Z there. I like this control scheme, though, because it's good enough that if you do a, like, missed input, the, like, controls are, like, smart enough that you can kind of know exactly what you did to get that missed input. Oh. There we go. Alright, I'm taking a lot of damage, though. That's not really great. Oh. I keep doing that. I'm not, like... I'm pressing Z, but it's not going into the crouch animation because it's too... It's too close to after I land. Okay. Oh, to have a uh, aiming reticule like you get in Banjo-Tooie right now. Though then I would have to go into first person and I'd be very not mobile. That, that was a little ballsy of me right now, but I somehow just kind of knew that one wouldn't hit me. There we go. And then Bottles chimes in to let you know that there is a flight pad present. Putting us firmly into Phase 3, the aerial battle. So I gotta line this up. Whoop. This is also a place where you can easily kill yourself if you, like, hit the edge and lose your flight and, like, keep going. You can pretty easily kill yourself there. You've been talking a big game comic. Come on, don't. 
don't make yourself look bad now. You gotta aim at where she's going to be, not at where she is. Because that's what Brunty does. She aims at where she thinks you're going to be. Uh -oh. well, nah, that was a little too slow. It was a little bit too late. Nope, this is some bad aiming. This is some bad aiming comic. Okay. We can do this. We can do this. Nope. No, 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 no. Oh, that's the thing I was talking about. Oh, man. I swear I did this in one try the other time that I was playing it. Oh, what an embarrassment. Alright, well, at least I opened these so that I get to... re stock myself each time. Okay, this time you really did beat me, Grunty. The first time wasn't a real victory for you, because I forfeited. <laughs> she was in the middle of one of her regular taunts there. Okay. But I guess... Um, I can start maybe giving some closing thoughts here. So, Banjo-Kazooie, like I said, it's one of my favorite games of all time. Not that I like it more than Banjo-Tooie, it's probably... Like, probably the place where it is in my top games is along with Banjo-Tooie. I also really like Donkey Kong 64, but there's so many, like, little problems that I have against Ban Donkey Kong 64 that I don't know if I can put it in that same echelon. Um, so if you guys are interested in watching me play Banjo-Tooie or Donkey Kong 64, let me know. I don't know if I'll get to it right away, because I should really be starting on Steam Sember soon. I didn't even start posting the thing that I'm doing with Patty yet. Okay. What, what, what's your pattern right now? Do you fire two or three? Okay. Alright, that was pretty quick. That was pretty quick, pretty slick. If I do say so myself. She also, like, moves back a lot when you hit her, so unless, unless you're lined up perfectly... It's hard to hit her multiple times in one spray of eggs. Yeah! That's the stuff right there. We're gonna do it again, too. Aw, oh, man. Oh no, my speed run. I think the, like, 100% record for this is, like, just under an hour, maybe? I've seen some, like, games done quick playthroughs of it. Um, I haven't watched the actual world record of it, but if I was a speedrunner, this is a game I would consider speedrunning with. Okay, so I think that puts us back into phase three. Yeah. Okay, and let's grab that. We're doing better than last time, actually. That was a really, that was a much better phase two. We just gotta not angle down when we do the beak bomb. I know you like talking to myself here, but... Okay, if you angle down, you better be sure you're going to hit her. Um, problem is you use the A button a lot to like steady yourself, which also moves you up a little bit. Okay. That's okay. 
That's a miss, but it's alright because we're gonna stay in the air. Is there like always a storm up here? Is that just like what happens when in, when such an evil person lives somewhere? Is that there's always storm clouds around their tower? I mean, I know we're high up like in the clouds, but that doesn't mean that it needs to always be stormy. I bet it would be beautiful up here on a clear night. Okay. Do some like progressive witchcraft, do some astrology. Where did your life go so wrong, Crunky? Alright. Phase four. She starts with the shield. Um, which is a shield that we cannot break through no matter what we try. But then these things come in. So, if you only know Banjo and Kazooie from, from uh, Super Smash Brothers then this might start to seem a little bit familiar. Um, we're getting to something related to their final smash from that game. So the Jinjos, I guess the Jinjos are actually like super powerful entities. They're like some kind of weird creatures of the Fey March. Um, that's not really Banjo lore, I'm, you know, I'm overselling it. But I think the Jinjos might have been like in prison for their incredible magic and that's like, that's why Grunty imprisoned them, because they're so powerful. Maybe she's even been drawing from their magic. I should probably shut up so that I can listen for the fireballs a little bit better. Yeah, because now you don't have as clear a view of her while you're doing this. But yeah, she has a great protection spell. This is like a level 8 shield spell. But these Jinjos are level 9 and above. They are epic level creatures. And Gruntilda ain't no level 20 witch, I'll tell you that. You could be maybe like a level 3 witch. Levels in D&D are like huge though. Like level 20 is a huge number for D&D levels. So... Her, her broom broke? We never see that broom again. Not in any of the sequels. That broom is dead. That little broom dog she had, it's dead. Forever. And here we have the Ginginator. Uh, Banjo's final smash. Luckily he doesn't have to, like, hit all of these holes in in, uh, Smash Brothers to actually use it. Okay, that's two down. Um, I'm kind of... I'm kind of tanking damage here to do it. This is where it comes in handy having all of the health pickups. Alright, and that delay when she did her homing shot was the break we needed. Here he is, the great Ginginator, and, and all the, like, Jinjos combine all, like, Steven Universe-style forming obsidian. Prepare to get wrecked, Grunty. Like, she could do this all day, but Ginginator can do this even longer. <laughs> and fires, like, one more green bolt of energy, kind of for no reason. It doesn't do anything. Okay. 
and Grundy's now trapped under a big rock in Spiral Mountain where she will remain for three years. Three years in the story and three years IRL until Banjo-Tooie, because that's where we find her at the beginning of Banjo-Tooie. Um, I guess, like, Grunty can't die. She doesn't, I mean, she can, but she can't, like, stop being animate. Because this, like, kills her, technically, but also her magic is so strong that she kind of just keeps going. She'll be a skeleton in the next one. But, yeah, Banjo-Kazooie defeated... And now, whereas before they were having a barbecue, now they're having a full-on beach vacation. Um, so funny story about... Yeah, I always wondered what that uh, serial number on Captain Blubber's jet ski is supposed to be, or why Captain Blubber is even here. Um, so we got this bikini babe walking around on the beach. I guess she's, like, serving fruit, like the watermelons that everybody's eating. Um... Some people say she was supposed to be Joanna Dark, and then she was changed. Apparently, the censors didn't like her because it was, like, too gratuitous that just, like, a big busty babe here for no reason, which that's exactly why she's here for no reason. Um, so, um, Rare decided to, um, as a concession to cover her up a bit more and gave her that tray table with two watermelons covering her, and that's a very tongue-in-cheek way to cover that. It, it's silly. Uh, Kazooie's got, like, a fruity drink there, and Banjo's got a big old pint. Mumbo's not there at the beach. Oh, yeah, he is later, though. Okay, and we get the rest of the character credits now. So we already saw the, like, staff credits last time after, um, after the Furnace Fun game show, but now it's going to include all of the enemies, and also Dingpon and Klungo. Which... I was surprised to know all these even have names. I would have just called that Cauliflower. I like the name Quarry. It's just a rock. But anyway, yeah, this has been Banjo-Kazooie. Um, again, one of my favorite games of all time. I don't think everything's perfect about it, but I think it comes together to be like a near-perfect experience. Um... Would it be nice if... Oh, its name is Big Butt. That's unfortunate. Um, like, would it be nice if the musical note thing worked properly? Like, I think even in the 360 version, it saves your notes so that you can't lose them if you die or whatever. Um, like, that would be nice, but it also creates this weird thing where, like, death really does have an impact and that you're being, you know, more careful. It, it can be really annoying, but, like... I don't know, maybe it's like a good kind of annoying? I'm not... I'm not sure, that's just, that's how it's always been for me, so it's hard for me to think of it any other way. You know, this game, I love it so much as it is that it's weird to change. Um... And I think that's why I also just like the N64 version, you know? Of course I'm partial to the version that I grew up with, even though the 360 version is probably better for the resolution alone. But... This is just the way I've always liked to play it, so that's why, you know, I stuck with the N64 for this playthrough. Um, and I think, you know, it's the same thing with Portal 1 and Portal 2. I remember Yahtzee talking about those games of Portal 1 versus Portal 2. I think it's the same with Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, where the first game is like a perfect strawberry. It's the best strawberry you've ever had. And you want more. So the sequel is three strawberries, and they're good. They're not perfect, but it is more of what you liked. Um, I certainly wouldn't say that Banjo-Tooie, like, hurts the legacy of Banjo-Kazooie or anything. It is definitely the, like, proper follow-up. Antude was saying, like, nobody talks about Banjo-Tooie, or nobody, like, reviews it, or people don't. And I wasn't really sure what he was talking about, because I love Banjo-Tooie. Um... It's very, very big and expansive. It's, like, not just more, it's, like, so much more. Um, to the point where it gets, like, overwhelming at times. And Banjo-Kazooie 1 is not overwhelming. I mean, it was to the point where, you know, besides my initial frustration, I was able to lose my footage from the first time beating this and then just 
play through all of it over the course of six hours again without really batting an eye. Like, I, I feel like I could play it a third time in a row now, too. Like, it's, and it's really fun to keep getting better at. There are parts like, um, like that one platforming section in Rusty Bucket Bay that you kind of dread doing. Um, and going through the same tree over and over again in Click Clock Wood can get a little bit irritating. One thing I like that Banjo-Tooie does, is not that I hate it in this game, but Banjo-Tooie tends to condense the notes together into little nests so that you don't have to collect a hundred things per level. It's more like collecting, like, 20 things. The, the points of the notes are kind of to guide you around a level, and it doesn't do that as much, but it does make it a little bit less stressful to collect all the notes, but then more stressful to collect some of the jiggies. Um, Banjo-Tooie has ten less jiggies than Banjo-Kazooie, but somehow will take you five times as long to collect all of them. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll play Banjo-Tooie sometime. I do want to do a character study on Banjo and Kazooie someday, uh, because I have ideas of things that I want to talk about with them. It wouldn't be one of the sooner episodes, though. I should really get back to working on episode three. I, ha I have a first draft of a script. I just need to kind of iron it out and make it a little bit nicer because I don't I don't like going on to the next step unless I'm like absolutely satisfied with the script. Flotsam, of course, is called Flotsam. Was there something else called Jetsam? Because like everything does that. It has a character named Flotsam and a character named Jetsam. Or like if it says one, it has to say the other. Snare Bear. That's a good one. All the, I love the humor of these games. I love how tongue-in-cheek they are, and they can even be, like, really self-deprecating. Um, when Nuts and Bolts came out, a lot of people thought that it was, like, insulting fans of the first two games, and I don't think that was their intention ever. I think it's just that they have this self-deprecating humor about their work all the time. They weren't trying to insult fans. They were just trying to, you know, take the piss out of themselves. They put Cheeto at the end, too, so if you didn't find Cheeto anywhere, you'd be like, what is that? What? Cheeto? There's a way to cheat? You know, so another way to, like, spark your interest in playing it a little bit more if you want. And this is a big thing that got... that drove people crazy for a sequel. This is the aforementioned stop and swap. You only see it if you did get every Jiggy in the game. Um, and Mumbo shows you these mystery eggs, which you can't actually get yet, and it turns out you can't actually get them at all without hacking the game a little bit. Because they are in the game's code, but they were supposed to be locked until Banjo-2 came out. You were supposed to use the Banjo-2 cartridge to unlock them in the Banjo-Kazooie cartridge. Um... And they put them back in for the 360 version. So that's another plus for the 360. If you have it for 360 or Xbox One via Rare Replay or something, like, definitely don't feel bad about playing it that way. Because this is a great game regardless. Like, if that's what you're used to, going back to the N64 version would probably be a pretty hard sell. That's the first time they say it, a Banjo-Kazooie Tooie? And <laughs> Mumbo's even saying, oh yeah, this game's gonna look terrible when the sequel came out. So yeah, that little, like, useless rock shark bait island, um, that can open up. You know, using a cheat device. Yeah, I think Mumbo's only only going to show us two of them and then ask us to figure out the other ones. But again, even according to plan, you wouldn't have been able to do this for another uh, three years. <laughs> I 
And I like Banjo and Kazooie just like commentating over their own gameplay. How does Mumbo have this footage of them doing something they've never done? But uh, yep, there's a mystery egg. Yeah, it would have been six mystery eggs and also the crystal key, which I showed you guys in Freeze Easy Peak in Waz's cave. Oh yeah, that's what he's gonna show us now. Also, where's Waza? Waza should be yelling about them being there. And the Jinjo respawned. Yeah, so that could open up, I guess. And there were so many questions about, like, what is the crystal key going to unlock? What does it unlock? It does actually unlock something in Banjo-Tooie, but they, may, they make a new way for you to get the crystal key in Banjo-Tooie. One that's, like, sort of lame, but it is also, like, just another thing for you to collect. Yeah, I think another one would have been the treasure chest in that one room in Mad Monster Mansion. Either that or the last barrel in um, the wine cellar of Mad Monster Mansion. <laughs> Mumbo, stop shaking the photo. We know you're hold holding a photo. But yeah, you can hack it and then even have, like, an extra screen on the pause menu that shows all of them, which is pretty cool. I don't have any of the hacking devices to do it. Tootie, it was good to see you. Goodbye forever. You do not appear in the sequel. They just, like, they didn't need her in the sequel, and they weren't going to contrive something for her to do. They just decided, okay, she's gonna go away. I guess maybe she goes to college or starts backpacking through Europe or something. Yep, Frontilla will return in the Avengers. And guys, that is my 100% run of Banjo-Kazooie, at least as 100% as I want to define it. Thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what you think about this game. Let me know if you'd want to see more of the rare 3D platformers, either Donkey Kong 64 or Banjo-Tooie, on this channel. Um, again, wouldn't be right away, but I'd like to gauge interest for that. And uh, please continue to watch and support. Thank you guys so much. I was happy to replay this game for six hours because I just really wanted to finish this few because I love doing this channel and I love showing you guys stuff, either games that I love or games while I'm experiencing them for the first time. Love having this little community with you guys, so let, let's keep it up. Anyway, have a nice day. Comic Foil out.